Hi, this is Randall here in Texas. And I'm Matt here in Michigan. Today, Randall and I are talking about a film that came out in 2019, a film that we didn't get to watch last year, but now got an opportunity to watch. It's called Jojo Rabbit. It's co-written and directed by Taika Waititi, and it has a big star-studded cast. Some of the people that aren't necessarily the main characters, but also in it, include Scarlett Johansson, Sam Rockwell, uh, Stephen Merchant, Rebel Wilson, Alfie Allen, and the two main characters we have are Roman Griffin Davis and Tomasin McKenzie. So, Randall, what did you think about Jojo Rabbit? Jojo Rabbit, for me, was pleasantly different. I I went in with not very much knowledge of what the film was. I remember hearing like a snippet of uh, Taika Waititi talking about, like, I can't believe I had to remind people that that Hitler was bad, you know? And the the promotionary trailers I saw kind of kind of cast it as a comedy and there are comedic events in it and there are some funny things in it but really that's not what the movie's about at all and I was pleasantly surprised once I got into the movie I was like okay it's not just a comedy no it's it's a big it's satire and stuff and like you said that's a very big distinction a lot of people were coming out against this film like you know what I don't know that we should be making a comedy with Nazi Germany but everything, the, the comedic elements is like how crazy, you know, ideas of Nazi Germany were. This all takes place, you know, centering around a 10-year-old boy. So a lot of it is like through the eyes of a 10-year-old of a and everything is done so over the top. They start off at like a, a Nazi camp for kids, boys camp, or girls too, you know, for children. And it almost looks like, you know, Boy Scout camp or Bible camp or something like that. But, Hitler you know, youth. It's a Hitler, Hitler, youth camp. Hitler Youth Camp. But the stuff that they do, it's like, it's like, no way would you let 10 year olds, you know, throw live grenades and, and stuff like that and, you know, stab each other with with knives and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Like satire is an interesting thing because you can do it and if you do it well like this film does and like starship troopers does it it all comes out and it works it works but like so many people don't seem to get it um it's like kind of almost like the producers when they do the little you know hitler thing yeah <laughs> uh, you know spring like time for hitler kind of thing time for hitler yeah like that's that's satire and they thought it was going to be you know a failure but like this film it's it is thick satire and it's okay to laugh at it but there are definitely scenes in this film really good scenes near the end for sure where it gets serious and you start you start like breaking down those those walls of the characters um again uh jojo the main character and this uh jewish woman this young jewish woman who's living in in his house who his mom is sheltering but Jojo's part of the Hitler youth and he has to, you know, like break down the barriers of propaganda to see her as a human. Um, that's what this film is. It starts out really, really thick satire and then it goes and it starts it starts whittling itself down to actually tell a very important, you know, point. It, it is youth trying to find their self in the, in the world. Jojo is a 10-year-old boy whose dad, you know, fought for Nazi Germany and some say that he's you know a deserter or something but it's Jojo's kind of like the man of the house now and he's a 10 year old he's trying to discover himself does he you know follow Nazi Germany because he kind of sees you know Nazism is is like home pride or whatever you know pride in your nation kind of thing but it's not until later that he starts to really question you know, what the Nazis are doing are those things that he really stands for kind of thing. And there's there's a couple of things that are just stand out in this movie. Um, Mackenzie, who plays, uh, uh, what's the girl's name? It's uh, Elsa. Elsa. She's a very, very good actress, and she does a very good job. Her role is probably one of the most serious roles, while at the same time, she just, she's like, she realizes that JoJo's 10 years old. So when he asks her questions like, you know, explain to me the history of the Jews, you know, which had been suppressed in Germany at the time. She just tells him joking stuff. She's like, he's 10 and she knows it, you know, and she's just kind of messing with him until he can find it, like figure out that she's being sarcastic. 
Um, I love her introduction <laughs> with her fingers going down the stair, <laughs> the stairwell. Um, like the way that that character is introduced, and Taika Waititi is fantastic in this as Hitler. I can't believe someone else he couldn't find someone to play this role, so he just did it himself. I'm like, no one else wanted to do that. This was a fantastic role, and he nailed it. And here's the thing: he's he's not even playing like actual Hitler. He's playing a ten-year-old boy's imaginary ideal of Hitler. His like imaginary friend is Adolf Hitler, which is fantastic. Like at the beginning, it's all very much kind of jokey, and then at the end, it's just like no, it's like serious Hitler. But he's got he's got the gunshot through his head because this is post Hitler having committed suicide. And I think it's funny that like his imaginary Hitler actually has the gunshot because Jojo now knows that he shot himself in the head. Um, I love the way that it ends though. He's just like, fuck you Hitler and kicks him out the window, (laughs) you know, exercising that imaginary demon. One of the main reasons I wanted to see this film was because of Taika Waititi. I uh, love a lot of the other stuff that he's been involved with, either writing or directing or even acting in. Some of my favorites, uh, Thor Ragnarok, uh, an episode of Star Wars The Mandalorian. Uh, also, What We Do in the Shadows. Excellent stuff. All stuff that I've seen Taika Waititi be in that I've enjoyed. So coming into this, it's like, all right, I kind of know what I'm getting into from that standpoint. And I think if you know more about Taika Waititi's stuff, you can get a little bit more enjoyment because you know where he's coming from with this stuff. Yeah, I mean, watch hit, watch the big budget, the Thor Ragnarok movie, and it's it's, it's practically a comedy, you know. But it but it still tells us a, uh, a story that fits well within the Marvel art. Like he's a super talented writer, director, and actor. You, you just you know you get one of those every once in a while. You get your Quentin Tarantino's, your Taika Waititi's. Uh, and they just do their own thing, and and it and it's amazing. Um, I do want to give a shout out to the supporting cast that you mentioned earlier, though. Like Sam Rockwell is really good in this. He's you know he's a German officer who had who had actually had a wound, so now he's just kind of stationed here to take care of the Hitler Youth. But he's obviously done with the war. He's like, you know what? It's obvious we're gonna lose at this point. And Rebel Wilson is fantastic. She just. She's the over-the-top comedy relief that, that this some scenes need where, where things are starting to get kind of bleak and dark. All of a sudden, her characters just come in like, I've had 18 babies for, for Germany. <laughs> just like, okay, that's funny. I love the supporting cast. Well, even near the end or whatever, when the, when the allies are, are invading, you know, like Berlin and stuff, she gets like a kid and puts like an explosive <laughs> in his back. He's like, there you go, go, go hug, you know, an go allied hug, soldier or whatever. Go, 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 go hug them. Or, it, <laughs> yeah, like I said, a lot of stuff, it's like, it's ridiculous. There is some kind of truth behind some of it, like having kids fight in the war and stuff. Like one, like Jojo's best friend is, becomes a soldier. And he's wearing a uniform that's made out of paper and kind of like the, the propaganda. He's like, oh, this is, you know, the latest paper tech that our German scientists have have come up with. You know, it's more lightweight and stuff and and better to fight. But I really I mean, it's because they had to put a kid in a paper uniform kind of thing. So, you know, it, 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 I mean, it, it's cre- it's crazy. And that's what kind of leads to that little bit of of humor it's not saying that any of this stuff is funny but it takes a way to get at serious issues with some comedy to it yeah i mean the best satire like i had already mentioned in fact i'll go i'll go one more like robocop robocop is just you know satire of the crime ridden detroit in the 60s and 70s and 80s really and there's comedy there's lightheartedness while at the same time being just brutal that's how you handle these kind of hard topics because you have, you know, your documentary style way, which is obviously very serious, but like you want people to kind of enjoy what they're watching, do it in good satire. I would say if you are someone that enjoys satire, a little bit of comedy and stuff, also get a good story. This is for you. If you're someone who is easily offended and takes everything at face value or whatever, I don't think you're going to enjoy this one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Now, 
If you like these kinds of reviews, Matt and I have got plenty of reviews up. New movie reviews, flashback reviews, TV show reviews. Make sure to give our channel a look-see. Give us a like and a subscribe if you want to continue to see any more of our stuff. We also have a Facebook page where you can hit us up anytime. For now, I'm Randall in Texas. Everyone have a great day. I'm Matt in Michigan. Have a good day, everyone.